August the 2nd, 2011. Chairman, would you please give the blessing this evening? Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you for all the safe travel for these people who come to see us this evening. We'd just like to ask that you would uh, bless the land with some rain and uh, guide us through this meeting, all the elected officials and the staff we have this evening, just guide us any way possible. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kevin. Is there any additions to the agenda?
what this is about. I'm Janet Crane. I am the finance officer for Barton County, but at the county we wear several hats. And the other hat I wear, I am also the project coordinator for the Wetlands and Wildlife National City Byway. And the county received a large national federal grant through the Highway Administration for marketing on the byway. St. John is one of the seven quarter communities. And we divided the grant twofold. One was an external marketing to come up with a marketing plan for national, state, and more regional development. The part that St. John was involved in was what we call the internal marketing, which was to get the seven border communities in a position to be able to cross market one another. And I want to give kudos to the person sitting in the back running the camera. Ron Colbert was your internal marketing rep. He was responsible for organizing meetings in St. John, and we have come up with the fact sheets and the storylines that are in these booklets. And you're probably wondering, well, when are we going to use these? Well, uh, when we delivered in Stafford, I think right now the county hospital is looking for a physician. These packets can be used for physician recruitment. And for example, right after that meeting, I had a call from your economic development director, and she goes, I need those fact sheets now for all the communities in Stafford County, which are Hudson, St. John, and Stafford. So that was just something, all this information is compiled, compiled on just a quick reference sheet. The other thing we did is we come, came up with the storylines. And you'll notice one of the stories uh, for St. John is the story of the Exxon Dusters. And ironically, uh, I did bring some brochures down. The uh, America's Byways, which is the division of the Federal Highway Administration, they are partnering with the National Park Service uh, for a commemorative of the Civil War, the 150 year anniversary. This is a really big opportunity. Stafford County is being featured. This is something that's happening at the South Coast <coughs> Byway because you are the only story, the only community or, I um, should say, region that is featuring the Exodusters. And what was very nice is Michael Holloway with the Stafford County Historical Museum took off with that story. And so your Martin Cemetery on Highway 50 is being featured. And what complements it, you used to have Bryce Studio over here, the glass negatives are all over in the Stafford County Historical Museum. He took many pictures of the ex-slaves. So I'm going to pass these brochures out to, so that you can have them. And also, Michael also prepared this Windows of the Past, the story of the WR Gray Studio, uh, the story of the glass plate negatives. So what we're hoping when this is all developed uh, I've been working with Chris Collier with the Great Bend Convention and Visitors Bureau, and she is working with people at the national level with the Federal Highway Administration. When the story all gets, when they have the national release on this, besides coming to look at the cemeteries, we're hoping that they will go over to the historical museum. They will see the uh, negatives, glass negatives, look at the photos and there will also be a display from the Kansas Historical Society there. Um, Judy Walden, who was our facilitator on this project, uh, I'm sure many of you met her. I know John and Ed, Jill, Ron, Terry. She will be back, uh, we're looking at the week of September 27th, and she's going to give a workshop. It will probably be in Great Bend, with the seven internal marketing members from each of the communities. And she's hoping that she'll do a trial run with these press kits. But at this workshop, she will give a class on how to effectively use that press kit and also some encouragement on some product development that she sees potential in St. John. And then we will also continue working on the cross-marketing between the quarter communities. I don't know if you have any specific questions. I did bring some byway brochures. I don't know if you have them, but the main reason I wanted to bring them is so you could check out our website, because our website has a wealth of information on it about the two wetlands, and then I did bring the state scenic byway brochures.
but for your distribution too. So I'm going to open it up. Do you have any questions? marketing specialists come to this area before because the state of Kansas through KDOT is marketing all 10 state scenic byways as a package and they've all been fascinated with the story of the Martin Cemetery and I know that that is a story that the native people really don't know that much about. Uh, when we had the whistle stop tour uh, which we came through St. John Ron did a great show at the Science Museum, and we had two preservationists with us, one from, the Denver, uh, from Denver with the National Historic Preservation Trust, uh, Patrick Zollner with the Kansas State Historical Society, and also a representative from Kansas Main Street. The gal from Kansas Main Street loved the Science Museum. She called me the next day. She goes, OK, I need some information on this. I want to bring my kids there. And also, you have an eclectic courthouse. You know, your courthouse is a triangle. If someone gets up there and looks at that architecture real closely, you have some iconic buildings. And so the whole idea on this is we know that not one community has enough to entice anybody for an extended stay. But if you are able to send people from community to community, like go to the Ellenwood Tunnels, Send on up to Claflin to look at the historic bridges, Science Museum. It's something to fill their day. And the whole purpose of this is economic development. And it's a clean industry. Okay. Well, again, thank you for your time. I've left some cards. If you have some questions, give me a call. And we'll look forward to seeing you September 27th. And I'll get with John on on who will be representing St. John at that meeting. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and again, a big thank you to Ron. Yeah, yeah thank you. He did awesome. a tremendous amount of work for a lot of volunteer work. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you.
is basically their wages. And so that is all depends on how many runs they might have throughout the year. So we're only halfway through the year. It's hard to say what's going to be left. Um, they are on a very, very tight budget. However, they're part of the general fund. And we know that if um, the swimming pool, which is part of the general fund, for instance, if they don't use all of their budget for the year, then we won't have a budget violation if one department goes under, over, and one department goes under, as long as they balance out and we don't have the full general fund under, over budget. So it's up to you guys if you want to wait to see or Mel, do you know where we're at on the swimming pool? We, we haven't had any capital outlay. I think we're going to have something major that we can have spread over up there for the fund. So, I mean, we can get to the end of the year. I don't foresee anything major there. And it's probably likely that it wouldn't have to be from another department. It would just depend on if we had with, the, with it being so dry, you can't just think that all our runs are going to be short and all of them are going to be, or we're not going to have very many of them. The early part of the year, it's down. It was really down. Yeah. But we haven't seen July yet. <laughs> so we haven't seen those wages yet, so they're not reflected in the financials. I wouldn't mind leaving it on the budget or leaving it on the agenda and put the budget over. Table one. Table one until next meeting. I'll make a motion to table until next meeting. I'll second that. Any more discussion? Would that be okay with you if yeah. we just kind of waited to see where yeah. we're at budget-wise and then we could get back with you on that? That would work. Okay. I think I think we'd like to take it into consideration, but just yeah. need to look at the financials. Okay. Madam Mayor, yes. I will tell you that I have visited with Farm Bureau. I do, the, the fire that he was talking about, I knew that they were insured by Farm Bureau and I knew that that camera that they used of the counties probably saved Farm Bureau a large plane. So I called and, and thinking what it would save them for years to come, I called to see if they had any kind of program within their, um, not the agency itself, but within their organization that would help to um, defer part of the cost. And they're still to get back to me on that. So there might be a chance we could get a thousand dollars or you know, just to see. And the other thing, uh, I'll be sending letters to John Zimmerman, Max Zimmerman, Max Fisher, Trent Farman, and Kenny Lee. They haven't made a meeting for about a year, so I'm going to make, and if, and if they're going to, don't want to be on anymore, I'm going to so, but I'm going to send them a letter. Okay. And that's it. Question. After her discussion, did we vote? Oh my God. Thank you, I think that went like that. Let's talk <laughs> Okay, back to the thermal imager, right? Yes. To table purchase. Yes, to table purchase. Always in there to say I. Always posting. Thanks, Kevin. Sorry. Okay. Any questions for Mike? Thank you, Mike. All right, thanks. Police Department, Matt. Uh, we would like to uh, send one more officer. To a school in Dodge City coming up August 15th and the 18th. It's a Control Force School. Uh, this would certify Aaron as an instructor in uh, several levels of uh, defensive tactics. Uh, they would uh, save us a lot of money each year on training. And it's also something that once Aaron gets back, as, as I mentioned, be certified as an instructor, we could bring other police departments. We, we could put on trainings here in St. John and charge other officers to come in. I, I don't think we'd have a problem making our money back because these are very. This is a very popular training course. It's one of the best defensive tactic methods out there right now. It's something I think our patrol officers really need. 
uh, because it's, uh, it's realistic survival uh, skills for police officers, and it would uh, give us another uh, instructor on the park. And as I mentioned, it would save us a lot of money each year training and bringing somebody in and having them instruct or sending each one of our officers to a different school. Uh, it would cost us $670 to send him to this four-day school in Dodge City. No, that is, that's just the class. The, class. the hotel, uh, you know, the class is $670. Now, that's with uh, a funding grant that we receive if we send him from this uh, organization. Um, and then we'll get probably get another $100 knocked off that uh, once we get him there. But we're not absolutely positive of that, so I don't want to put that in there until we know for sure. Uh, of course, we'd, be, we'd have to put him up at a hotel and uh, the pricing on that would be $58 a night. Uh, since we have the tax exempt status, it would be $58 a night. I already talked to Quality in and Dodge City, and that was the best rate I could find, so we're looking at $232 for four days in hotel. Okay, thank you. Uh,
But if it can't be done in your system, it shouldn't be something that would be too terrible. What were the other cities doing? Just, were they, just the, the option four, but just month to month. It, it may be that because well, you're going to be, since you will be entering just the meter reading, you know, unless it throws out a negative number, you know, we enter the reading. So um, it may be that it will be pretty simple, but right. I, I'm I, not a... I, I don't, I don't, I don't believe you've been able to work with it. I'm putting my hat off in my previous life. Because if you will produce a negative, if it did produce 1,500, your meter is going to be your meter reading less, less than, less than, and so then you take the negative, that out. and it would actually be a credit, and that's not what we're talking about. We're not carrying it till an hour, so maybe something you'd have to enter it in on a separate line item mm -hmm. the next month. So if next month they buy a thousand or use a thousand and generates 500, then you'd have the 500 and you're billing for zero. Uh, this this uh, policy will be put in place, and you know it's, it's, it pretty much covers everything that uh, the, the customer would need to do. And um, then you guys would have that in that here. Now, if you have any question on it, we can talk about it now, or I'm going to go to the next step and we'll talk a little bit about the rate. Um, and we can, it's kind of all tied together. Uh, we have a couple options on how we do the the rate that we would charge to. One, if you just did the existing energy rate, which is an energy only charge that we talked about, then you would basically be uh, allowing them to net out that energy charge. And that's that would that'd be okay, but again, there's, there's certain cost components within that rate that don't get netted out by, by a, a renewable energy source. So I had proposed last time to do a demand and energy rate. And we wanted to talk, I'm going to go ahead and give this hand this up. Because there's two pages there. Uh, give it Now what this does is, is I went ahead and put uh, Uh, we put this, you have, you can, if a residential or commercial user uh, were to, were to uh, put in a generation, they, they request it to, the net, to have net metering capability, they, they do the interconnect uh, application, the net metering application, and then they would, uh, if, uh, once approved by the city, then you would go to the supplement generation user rate, which would have a demand and energy component. Uh, the, uh, the metering and no, I might uh, even I know you've followed up on that, but the metering capability you have now uh, doesn't exactly allow bi-directional, but it can be either modified or purchased within that deal, right? You want know to? We, we can our electronic meters. We can have them uh, key put in there for 125 dollars, and it will be a bi-directional meter back and forth, or my link meter ready to go for 250. So we can. But your 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 crew would be able to install yeah. this. It's, it's from technology from over, and so we would put that in there. But the, there is a cost premium to the meters, like Melvis said. Uh, so that the minimum customer charge was, was twelve dollars, uh, is what uh, I'm proposing versus the six dollar residential current or the nine dollar commercial because it's a, it requires. A uh, the demand and energy is the, those the twelve dollars and fifty cents per kW and the fifty five cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, and then if you, the next paragraph uh, is is uh, refers to uh, city agrees to care over energy produced in accordance with the net energy policy, which is what we just talked about. Now, the discussion last time was, and we'll just touch on this guy. But we, uh, I want to make sure everybody's comfortable with it. And if we have any other thoughts, we'd be more than happy to, to address them. But if we could, uh, there's two pieces of paper here. If I can pass these around, uh, this is this is how we went about looking at this this rate. Yeah, 
same. Both are the same. I'm sorry. I've had two of them coming in different stages. All right. The, the resident, residential customer, what we wanted to try to do was, was develop a rate that, without doing a full full blown rate study, we wanted awesome. to develop a rate that would allow us to recover our same thing we recover now, to allow this intermittent load type arrangement. So, it, it, and here's how we did I didn't cover this last time, so like you want to hear the previous one before when we did this, when we looked at this earlier, but the residential customer is the top one. I went ahead and modeled. That's the current arrangement you have right now with that customer. If you look at the top uh, row up there, you've got the, that's a, that's a, a large cu residential customer under the customer charge, and then the split between the 10 cents and uh, 10.55 and the 8.90 for the energy charge. And then the fuel adjustment, I use just a, a standard fuel adjustment. I mean, you, you, it runs between 2.4 and 2.7. I use 2.6. It, it's variable, it's the same in all the analysis. And there's, the total cost was that particular rate. That's an actual situation. Then, then if I said, okay, we went to this, a customer installed this commercial rate that had zero wind. They didn't produce anything. They, they were on this rate. They had it in the They would go, they would be on this rate. And this is the same type of load. And basically, as you can see, it was uh, you know, about three, less than 4% difference under the same scenario. And basically, it's the difference of the meter, uh, the meter charge that you had to, then we had to go out and put a different meter. So essentially, if they did nothing and they went to this rate, it'd be a, a push. Okay, so the city's not occurring. We're, we're covering our cost of additional meter, but then there's nothing. Now, if they generate some, if they generate this last scenario, now again, this is using actual wind production that's provided by the vendor, but so it's not. I'm not saying this is what they would, what they their performance would be, but this is how it would work. Essentially, the city would retain a demand charge. You see that about a third of the way through there, they would. Uh, you know, you're going to sell less kilowatt hours, uh, but you'd retain uh, a, a, a portion of that fee. Through a demand charge, and that's one thousand two hundred seventy-six dollars. If you look at that middle middle column demand charge, and then the energy charge, so you had very little energy charge during the summer months when you had the load higher. Um, you, you would sell some energy, but not much, and so that carries on through. I didn't put anything for a sellback because we would just be, and I didn't also didn't assume uh, any carryover. So this is just this is just there would be some in this scenario, but this is without any carryover, and so basically the the. the consumer would see a reduction in their uh, city bill, the, the city would still retain uh, a portion of their cost to cover their fixed cost. So that's how, that's how the, we derived at that. Now, to break that down a little further, I wanted to make this, the next chart is more, probably more, um, I don't want to say interesting, but more um, important to, to evaluate. I went ahead and took across the top there, that's the last 12 months under your new contract. Uh, that's very important. It's been a very good contract for you, but the last 12 months it's been, it's been uh, good. And uh, so I took this, what? It's been high. Yeah, well, it's been high. I know that, that, uh, but, but the cost, and like today, the price, price is probably really high. Uh, for, for everybody here, it's, it's, I mean, your cost for killing hours has been surprisingly uh, but if you look at that chart, the far left graph, that's your average cost of kilowatt hour that you're paying. That's the energy that you're buying. That's your cost of your energy provided. And I took that chart and plotted out of this. This is your actual energy bills across the top, including transmission. So every kilowatt hour that you have, that somebody's displacing, is one less kilowatt hour you're having to buy at this, at this arrangement. Okay? So I said, okay, that's your cost per kilowatt hour, and I put it. I, I, you know, basically, as you can see, you're running right around the five cents and it dips down a little bit, so I'm going to stay covered right around that level. Keep in mind that the rate that we proposed had a 12 month 50 cent demand charge but a 5.5 cents a kilowatt hour. So every kilowatt hour that they, they generate, they're going to save 5.5 cents a kilowatt hour. You look at your graph, and hardly ever did you ever have above 5.5 cents a kilowatt hour. So we're allowing them to, to completely retain all the savings that they generate. In addition, they would get to do the, the 5.5 plus the fuel adjustment that we had would, is, is, is what you get displaced. 
what we're going to retain is everything else that, that they're not saying. So basically, this this piece right here shows you what, what it is. Now the bottom chart, the bottom uh, calculation is that same customer charge with the actual fuel adjustment, and I broke it up a little bit to to uh, so we could, we could kind of work it backwards to get to where, where our cost is. Basically, the customer charge, the energy charge, and then that if you look at that next call over right here, it's the cents per kilowatt hour, 10.5 cents per kilowatt hour. That's the average between these two, two broken up. The fuel adjustment, this is the actual fuel adjustment that you guys plot on your bill, and then the fuel cost is this, and then the total city bill is here, and your cost per kilowatt hour is this chart right here. That right there, I went ahead and took, took that cost, broke it down even further, and this chart right here shows you what their cost per kilowatt hour is based on the different categories. The two light blue ones is the energy charge. In the base rate right now, you got three and a half, three point one cents a kilowatt hour every month. That's in there, that's how much you have in there for wholesale purchase. Then anytime your wholesale purchase price is outside of three point one, which is every month, I mean that's what we've got here, it's five point something. So it's five cents, every month you've got at least a two point two cents a kilowatt hour just 1.9 to 2 cents a kilowatt hour adjustment. So that's what the light blue is. That's the, the fuel adjustment that's, that's in there. So every month the customer right now pays for, in their bill, they pay the dark blue and the light blue, blue, and that would be avoided if they weren't buying that kilowatt hour. The rest of it, the light green right in the middle, is a customer charge spread out, not on a monthly customer charge, but on a per kilowatt hour basis. And then the purple is everything left after that. And that's the stuff that, that's not related to the wholesale power cost. So every kilowatt hour you generate, uh, if somebody displaces and they don't buy, you, the city still has that that cost. Okay. So then I went down here and I said, what is the, uh, just to show you what, uh, if, if we took the the customer charge on a per kilowatt hour, but these two black, these two blue columns right here are the, are the cost that you would avoid. And uh, the, 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 the next column over here, uh, that is the cost of this purple. That's the cost of all the other stuff in, that you do that you cover with the city. Everything else is in there on the cost per kilowatt hour on that amount. And so, and see, if that total cents per kilowatt hour matches with the total cents per kilowatt hour of your current rate. So then I said, okay, well, how much is your energy only right there? Is that next call more? So the energy only cost per kilowatt hour runs in that, you know, right around that six cents um, per kilowatt hour that, that, is, that is displaced. And under the rate we're proposing, it allows that customer to, to save 5.5 plus the fuel adjustment. So they will exceed more than that. And then the next call up is the demand on the demand rate right there is basically saying under this new demand rate, which is a 5.5 plus that fuel adjustment actual, is that's the amount that the, the, that the winter will so if it runs like it's supposed to, but that's we can't we can't control that. But if it does, the customer would get those benefits for generating. Uh, and then so what, what that does is that, that's why that's how that I broke that out is to allow us to pass through and then retain those costs. So we can do if, if we didn't do this, then basically every kilowatt hour they generate, we're going to be displacing the 13 cents a kilowatt hour because it's just except for the customer charge, everything else is displaced by that. So that's that's the the concept there allows now if if we do a demand charge and the customer does. But if it generates more than that, then they, they certainly it helps the economics of their project and whatever, and, and, and that's okay. But if it does worse than that, then it's certainly not probably as going to be less of a good deal. You know, still going to pay that same fixed cost to the city, but they won't say the approximately seven and a half cents per kilowatt hour that, they, that this rate allows them to do. So I'd say you have, you have, uh, to either adopt a rate like this, um, or just leave your rates alone. It's a job for net metering and just let them displace the whole third pole and fill an hour rate. Now, if you did that, you, you would maybe want to consider dropping your uh, 3% to 1% amount. It's a, it's a pretty big amount. It does get the city pretty, pretty hard. But, uh, but, I, but I, I thought it's 1%. Doesn't
this allows a few projects to go on there if, you know, if, 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 they, if they work. And if they, you know. So, thoughts on that?
But as far as where county employees are parked, I'm not sure who can dictate that. But they do use the parking lots. I mean, that one is full. I have had a hard time finding a parking spot at times. Um, the one on the next to the There was uh, 12 cars parked in that area, 20 spaces. Um, one car parked in the night space directly behind the uh, annex, and out of the tent uh, right on the uh, Broadway, right behind the courthouse, there were five used out of the tent. So, yeah. I don't know what could be uh, done to help the seniors outside of making that a public parking lot and having the employees park behind the annex. There's plenty of space back there right next to the flower shop and the exercise. We can't this park in that. That's not owned by That's not owned. Okay. That's now. And right. once we start parking in that, there won't be that. But next to the Whitson of the county owns, right? So will this is being addressed at the wrong table then? Well, I think it kind of is. I mean, I think we need to just kind of do what Steve was asking with permission to put a sign in front of the annex. Yeah, my understanding from what he's asking or the commissioners is asking is not to have any parking in front of the new annex building unless it's handicapped. For no one to park in front of the annex building. Unless you're loading or unloading. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
what about on the side street, you know, that kind of dips in there? Would that give room to do some angle parking? And would that be close enough for the senior citizens? Side street. Is that been Oh, there? I see. Yeah. Well, for the traffic in and out of the building, it's two hours really even a concern here. I mean, I think we're sitting here arguing over something that's completely idiotic. That's the only thing. I see what you mean. Like for the senior citizens for lunch, Troy, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, we're worried about two hours of somebody's happy, the senior citizen has to be parked in there to go eat. But I haven't seen a whole lot of traffic in and out yet. So, I mean, I think the entire time I was there, and I was probably there about two hours. Saw one car go through that street. So. Well, I mean, I think Troy's talking about going in and out of the building. Oh, yeah, out of the annex building. It's not like there's a thousand people wandering in and out of that thing every day. I don't think two hours is an issue. No, I don't yeah. think it's the annex is having. I mean, we do have a lot of traffic, but most people do park elsewhere, too. And if they're there, they park in front for a short period of time. They come in, do their thing, and they leave. I think his main thing was he just didn't want to pull the cars because we have the the ramps at either end. And so um, by law, they have to be able to be used. I mean, you can't have traffic blocking that. I agree. I'm not real sure. Well, could we possibly put in a uh, handicap parking? Yeah, well, just to mark the deals to where they can't park in front of the... Yeah. Deals in the rest of the streets. So. That's what I meant. Do that for handicap parking. If we could do that the from the alley to like maybe part way in front of the building, just handicap parking only. Well, just so it doesn't block the ramps. Yes. And then the rest of it's open. You know, like I said, a little wood paint and a handicap sign right there where your ramp is. Yep. I That's think it. we ought to just talk to Steve again and just double check. Okay, we get all see what he's talking about on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's not a big issue, but I think we just need to get it straightened out. Okay. So, table it. Okay. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's not a big issue. <laughs> I'm not parking for our senior citizens. I do, because they're there every day for those two hours. They're there. I just, yeah, I don't want to completely block off the parking.
vacation of uh, street right of way. And the, the story on this is you're familiar with the practice field and the fence that's built around there. Well, they were in the process of going to renew that. And for whatever reason, I don't know how long that fence has been there, it was built on the road right of way. And to, to renew it, you know, that, it, you know, we don't get permits for building anything on the right of way. So I talked to Dr. Kenworthy and worked with Don and we came up with an idea of uh, vacating uh, portion of the road right away. It would be no different than what's been there for uh, anybody knows how long. 48 years. 48 years. <laughs> okay. So uh, basically, we don't have any, the city does not have any utilities in that right away at this time, but once we, we give up this right away, we could you know, put anything there or you know, we don't have any plans to widen the road out or anything like that. So it's not been an issue, so I don't, I really don't think that uh, any harm to come of it. So, and plus they're concerned about the amount of space and that's, that's what they're trying to do. So I think uh, their attorneys are going to probably tell them. The process, if they already filed a petition to make you, the process is you publish a notice of paper, you have a hearing 20 days after its publication, so it'll come before the council to a written order to approve the vacating the right by the time of the September or site or whatever meeting is September. So we're going to give him permission to not take Big Smith to the project. That's not correct. I don't think we can do that. No, we can't do it. So we run this in the paper. No, well, I mean. Updating the curtain. There's the information you sent. Yes, I mean. Yeah, but he's on the right of way. And he has been for ever. That's right. So. So you're going to hold him up. With our zoning. Am I correct now? Well, actually, it's a state, as far as the vacation of it is actually. I mean, it's a state state process. In order to vacate the right of way, we have to follow the state statute. That requires 20 day, requires a publication and, and 20 day work. Which, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. So we'll have it done for the first meeting in September, I think. But weren't they wanting to get that done before? So yeah. I guess Kevin's yeah. question yeah. is do we have the right to, to let give them permission to do it? Uh, if they want to go ahead and just. Doing county kind of permission and paying the LL Right. Well, that's actually what I'll do. It's been there forever. Yeah. He's going to mess up his school. Recess, PE. Yeah. Recess and PE. Well, they have that, but that's good for a reason. Keep those rowdy kids in there. <laughs> I don't think it has anything to do with that yet. Oh, yeah. Okay, so council's given him permission, given the school permission to go ahead and put the fence up. Yes. Okay. I just don't want to change my mind and keep them up. <laughs> That's exactly right. I don't think the main change of mind. Sure. Sure. Okay. That's right. This states a date and time for the public hearing before it gets publicized. Can you tell me what you want? And then they will put Well, it's got to be 20 days after it's published, so Terry gets it in next. Wednesday, you got 20 days after you'll be able to do it by the September. Since September 6th on this. Uh, 20 already, days? 20 days after it's published. I think it's, oh, it won't be in the paper. So it'll be the 10th? Yeah, it'll so be the 10th. Have, have so yeah, I'll work the 6th. So, yeah, September the 6th. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we'll put it in the paper.
John Haas with Ransom and Associates. He was actually at the rate study workshop that Jill and I went to at Hayes back in February when it was snowing great big flakes, I think. But um, they have a template. They're, uh, they have a grant through KDHE. They're basically hired by them to help us out um, and anybody else in our same predicament. They uh, have a template to put in the numbers that have come directly from our financials. And then when there's some questions about some things, they would call me and we would verify different things. Um, since I sent the packets, we had gotten preliminary numbers from um, Don Heller that's looking a little lower. And so I got um, with them and they redid those and um, I asked them to do a fourth scenario. And you should have all of these. You should have a sheet that has four scenarios on it. Everything behind this, this is actually supposed to be the last sheet, explains how they got to these numbers. So if you have I gave you all that. It's a lot of information. If you didn't want anything to do with it, that's fine. But if you wanted to delve into it, you had it. Of course, we can't see all the formulas and everything. But those came directly from our own financials and our, our customer usage and everything. And what was in the pop packet is what I'm talking about. You don't have a choice. Oh. This is what she's yeah, talking about. Yeah, I got it. This is okay. what she's talking about. So the one that has A, B, C, D on it. That's the one that was sent to us today with the new numbers. And um, what's in the yellow there, the that's our current rates. And that's what, what we charge for um, our base rate is the $5. It includes 3,000 gallons. And then for each 1,000 gallon after that, we charge $1.60. OK, so that is like unheard of and dirt cheap. And, and we've been locked out of the building. The second one, A, is what we actually should be setting at to operate right now as it is without the treatment plant. This is where we should be setting. Again, the, this raising just the minimum charge, it includes 3,000 gallons, and each, uh, for the 715, each Thousand gallons after that is 229. You can see what it costs down at the bottom for the different steps. B would be for um, the whole amount, still having the same kind of structure of 3,000 gallons for your base, and this would be your full amount of the um, for the project for your treatment. C would be giving you a, a little different structure. Your base rate would only include 1,000 gallons. Your, and then you see on the um, water rates on down, you have for each $4.53 for each 1,000 gallons after that. I asked them to give me just a scenario of making our base rate, including the $1,000, $10, and then figuring out what our steps would have to be if we just raise that base rate to $10 straight across. So everybody gets a little lower rate for that first thousand. This hopefully would help take care of um, those folks that are on a set income and without any ability to change their revenue. That would double it, but it may not, it, and it would give them a break just on the first step. When we were looking at those numbers today, um, I was surprised to see that there weren't that many who just used 1,000 gallons. Those that are on fixed income looked like it was more like two. So you're giving them a, a, a bit of a break because it doesn't go all the way up. And so for 2,000 gallons in a month, 
we would be on that scenario, fifteen dollars and forty-six cents. We've now tripled the rate. So there's a lot of different scenarios to look at. Just those are a few that that we put together, and um, the gal that's punching in our numbers, she said, "Is there anything else I can do more for you?" And I said. We could do 20 of them, and they're going to make you think of something else. So if you have a different scenario you'd like us to look at to, to work up, then, you know, I can call her tomorrow and we can get new numbers. The reason right now that um, we're operating in the lab without raising it um, Basically, is we're not paying a salary out of there because our salary, our salary person that would be paid out of there is deployed. So you know that's a big expense in there. So if but I had them figure it as if we were paying somebody out of there because we will be. So we're not operating in the red, but if we had somebody in there and we were paying the salary and all its benefits out of there, we might be. It's very close. Any questions about how we got to this point or um, other scenarios you'd like to look at? Or You said B, B on has, is figuring the, the rate deal for the water plant, is that correct? Yes, B is figuring the rate deal, the total amount, which now looks like with the forgiveness, about $2.5 million instead of $3 million. And Don was, you know, pretty confident with that number. So um, for the 3,000 gallons, it would be $17.45. For every 1,000 gallon after that, under that scenario, it would be $5.58. This really came in lower than what I thought it was going to be. I had, you know, I had numbers thrown at me at times as much as $30 a thousand gallon in other communities when they did things like this. So I was surprised that they're here. I know it's it's raising it, but I should have looked up the last time they were raised. I don't even remember. I don't know. It hasn't been since I've worked for it. It was raised when we did the last one of the project. It was before that. But we definitely have to raise them. Well, that's the only way you pay your debt. We were, I think it's a, a wonderful gift that we're getting that 30% loan forgiveness. Yeah. It's huge. So we need to ask. You guys want to make a motion tonight? Well, okay. you need to instruct because we'll have to do an ordinance yes. to make that change. So we just need to know what numbers you want to go with on that ordinance. And, you know, maybe you want to wait until um, fall to put it into effect, you know, to, for the um, end of the September month. I don't know. When you guys did raise the electric rates, you waited until um, fall, I believe, to put those into effect, wasn't it, in the fall? Seems like it was in September. So that you wouldn't hit them with a high rate at high usage time. Yeah. Right, but they, they could still go ahead and make the decision, couldn't they? Yes. What's the average household down here as far as you you, it's, you just can't, you don't have an average. I mean, I could figure an average, but it's not going to be a good representation because it, it affects 
how many people live in the house, how many baths they take, or if they take right. showers, how many times the sheets are washed a month. You know, it just is whether they're um, using water to water their yards or washing their dog pen down or even you know, washing their vehicle. Right, I understand that, but I mean, I just, I would think most of it would be over 3,000 for, for the house. Sure. Of it. I do like the option of D with, with the uh, $10 property, so those on a fixed income may be a little bit of a break. Yeah, $10 is a lot more affordable than 17 Yeah. Yeah, so you get to a, a family that, a, a household that has a family, and then you're the next But couple, that's just the first After the next gallons. two or three thousand gallons, it goes yeah. away. That On <laughs> scenario B, for three thousand gallons, it's actually higher than scenario B. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you. the thing is, is you guys have to decide who's going to pay for this. And at really what percentage, you know. But by the time you get down to, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same way. It just increases on down on D. Yeah. So it does come, it comes down to that. Now, everybody yeah, gets that $10. Would be the most fair, fair. Fairest, because you're even saying that most of the people that, that you looked at that you know are kind of on a fixed, mm -hmm. they're using 2000 or more anyway. Well, it's they're only, usually, they're usually, you know, I, I think it looks like, one month, is, it hasn't rolled over to two, and the next month they've used two. So, you know, it's like they use one and something. And so some months they get charged two, and some months they well, use what, one. So. I would think B would be the fairest. But.
ready for the Kansas donation? Um, yeah. I think Mel had Barry get some numbers on some trees. You know, they had, they're the community that was struck by the tornado and asked for help from other municipalities. And, and I had mentioned I wouldn't mind donating a couple trees, and we had talked about it briefly and kind of tabled it. Um, Barry Reagan went in and, and got these, uh, got some prices on some trees from a nursery, I believe, and they're about $200 or less a tree. Um, if you want the one-year warranty, they're a little bit more, and then they were going to charge $200 to deliver and then another $200 to plant, which is really expensive. So we had kind of wondered uh, about maybe just donating two trees, the cost of two trees, maybe $500 total or something like that. So they can maybe go get, purchase the trees if there's a local nursery or, mm -hmm. or something, um, and then they plant them. Maybe somebody would volunteer to plant them. Um, would we have that? And would you, we uh, probably wouldn't want to do that out of the general fund. We probably want to do that out of one of your enterprise funds. Where do water for our tree park? That comes out in general for our own, um, but if you're going to make a donation, I, I wouldn't think that you would want to do it off of the taxpayer funds, the tax tax. Um, I suggest leaving it up in the, each individual citizen if they want to make the can. Come on, that's the choice. Like the citizens from St. John? Yeah, it's, I mean, they've collected their tax dollars to help here. Didn't we donate to Kinsley? Or are you the Green Fruits or when they had their tornado? Yeah, we did. And they had asked for the municipality citizens' help. And that's what they're asking to as well. And actually, how that came across is that they didn't reach out for okay. another city that's kind of close to them. Yes. And has donated some and said there was need and would others, you know, because we don't know when it might be our turn. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of how it was presented across the city clerk's list. And trees vary in your size on the cost. I mean, you know that kind of side of the tree. So, I mean, $250 per tree would get you a nice three inch diameter tree, a good size start, and it would probably pay for the fertilizer, the compost, and maybe maybe a little bit of the planting. Yeah. Um, surely there's somebody in the community that would probably plant the trees. So, yes. Is there anything that we would have to specify for a tree or we just say? You just give them the five hundred bucks. Yes. Yeah. 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 Do with it what you yeah. see you need done instead of. Yeah, and that's true. Yeah. Yeah. We can I mean, do that. I don't really worry about this. Shit. If they don't want to do it, they'll just give me five hundred bucks. Yes. Yeah, they can do whatever they want to. So, does someone like to make a motion? I'd like to donate five hundred dollars to Ready or Me.